This video is going viral, by the I way. Labor related. Uh, read the replies. The idiotic right wing cesspool. Sure, I'll take a look at this. I've seen it. I haven't watched it yet. All right. I cannot stand how the news has been dogging Gen Z and calling them lazy for not wanting to work a nine to five for the rest of their lives. Let me put it in perspective for everybody who's a little confused here, okay? I work five days out of the week, 40 hours a week, okay? I do not make enough to live on my own. I would not make enough to pay rent, water, electric, and eat all by myself. I would not be capable of doing that. 20 years ago, when you were getting started, you could live on your own. Gen X and millennials already gave the 9 to 5 gig a shot, and it fell apart miserably for most of them. Why would Gen Z want to sign up with the same false promises? All right, let's continue with you. You have 20 years of experience in a career that has allowed you to gain raises, to get more money, to profit you in an economy that you created. You can sit here and you can call Gen Z lazy all you want, but I've been working my tail end off just to barely make it by. And respectfully, I don't want to do that for the rest of my life. I don't want to work my tail end off, wasting all of my life working just to barely be able to pay my bills. And that is what you created, not Gen Z. We're just here getting started. You've been doing it for the last 20 years. You tell me how it got ruined. I think it's, like, odd that people are dunking on her because, like, it's weird to, like, frame it from a Gen Z problem because this is a consistent problem under capitalism. And, yes, generational politics, specifically, like, this kind of generational divide is, a, is yet another way for liberals to try and mystify class politics. That's it, okay? That's how this works. Same principle behind the uh, idea of, like, oh, upper middle income or, or middle class. Like, all of these concepts were created with the express purpose of trying to mystify class dynamics, which are pretty apparent, pretty obvious. And it's very successful, if I do say so myself. I use it sometimes as well, colloquially, right? So, overall, what she's saying is correct. Uh, I don't think that... I, I don't think that it's a controversial take to be like, hey, working at Walmart... As, as a worker at Walmart, I shouldn't have to work 40 hours and still not be able to make ends meet and still not be able to live by myself. That's a non-controversial perspective. Anyone that yells at that is a buffoon. Anyone that yells at that quite literally fails to capture their own conditions. They are doing what I like to always call peasant brain. They're doing the me lord is what they're doing. They're, they're going around and saying, no, me lord, you deserve all the grain. You deserve it, me lord. The other peasants are hiding the grain from you. It wasn't that bad of a bountiful winter. That's what you're doing. You're advocating against other fellow peasants, okay? You're sucking up to the lord. That's it. She correctly identifies America in the realization that she's never going to get out of that cycle of working for nothing. Hit her while she's taking on this video is amazing. She's correct. While alienation doesn't exist for everyone, it always hurts the next generation more. That's what the late stage capitalism necessitates. Gen Alpha will say the same, and it will be just as correct. Yes. I mean, this conditions worsen relatively to the other people. And the reality of the matter is that this is a problem that every generation has experienced time and time again. I do think that people, they do definitely have, like, rose-colored nostalgia glasses on. I mean, there's certain aspects of, like, uh, American existence that have uh, on paper gotten better for a broader uh, percentage of the audience. However, overall, we still haven't solved this very serious problem, which is if you work 40 to 50 hours a week, you should be able to live on your own. That is crazy. Okay. That's crazy. It's ironic because she works at Walmart, which is the greatest welfare recipient of all time in the United States of America. As a company, a gigantic percentage of their workforce works on food stamps. Like, they don't get paid enough. And Walmart adjusts their wages with that in mind. They get the food stamps from the federal government or from their state governments, and then they turn around and use those food stamps at Walmart. Okay? What a way to double book. Oh, my Lord. Additionally messed up when you think about the reality that the Walton family, I believe, still maintain like 50% ownership over Walmart, which means that we are directly giving them a tremendous amount of money. Like the federal government is directly subsidizing a ginormous amount to the tens of billions in their uh, net worth that they uh, continuously grow year over year. Whew. We can sit here and we can call Gen Z lazy all you want, but you let the economy turn into what it did. You let it all run to hell.
and now it's Gen Z's fault because we don't want to work to fix your mistakes. Anyway, I work two jobs is essentially around 50 to 60 hours a week. I'm also a full-time student. This late-stage capitalism cycle is brutal. Yeah. Crazy statistic. In the UK 20 years ago, the majority of 18 to 30-year-olds lived with their kids. Now the majority of 18 to 30-year-olds live with their parents. Yep. I'm 37, 20 years into this madness, and it just never changes, only gets worse. I'm not interested in struggling to meet some arbitrary deadline set by someone else to just pay my bills. I'll forever be anti-work. <sighs> yeah, I I don't know. Anger is an honest emotion, but I think our anger is misdirected at generational politics when it's more of a systematic issue on how we organize the economy, in my opinion. Yes, I am not a believer in generational politics. That is precisely the reason why I, uh, I told Jenk what I told him, that uh, it is a foolhardy, silly way of analysis that uh, will leave you shocked when you find out that there are still very much, you know, a 50-50 split between the two different parties, no matter what. I've shared this here before, but it's relevant again. I have my doctorate in pharmacy. I left retail pharmacy because I couldn't even afford to pay my $316,000 uh, in loans on a salary of 120K while living in DC. So now I make 205K and was forced to move to DC to work in person at a desk job. I pay 3,200 in rent in a two bedroom uh, bathroom and lose 2.5K a month in loans. I am so far away from my house and I'm almost 32. Yeah, and you're, you're one of the highest trained uh, professionals overall. I was talking to my mom about this the other night when she was talking about how lazy Gen Z, her Gen Z coworkers are. I asked her how much her Gen Z coworkers make currently. She said 40K. Then I asked her how much she made when she was their age working in that same job they're working in now. She said 40K. And Gen Xers and boomers wonder why Gen Zs hate working. Buy a fan of house or you fake? I'm fake. I'm fake as hell. I'm the fakest you've ever seen. Anyway. They used to call Gen X the me, me, me generation. Same story every generation. Yes. Generational politics are unchanging. Because the real political, the real back and forth in politics are not are on different generations, but instead they are done on class lines. The dynamic between the capital owning class and the wage laborer class is still the same. The needs are still the same. Obviously, it gets a little bit more muddied with like professional, uh, with the, with the concept of like professional work and and things of that nature. But overall, it's still albeit reductive, still something that you can uh, uh, point to as your, as your basis, as your, found, as your foundational politics. Our work at a lab company announced they were giving everyone a raise to help match inflation prices, and they only give us a 50 cents raise hourly. Nice. I mean, there's a lot you can do with that. Yeah, nobody wants to work anymore is also another take that has existed in perpetuity. That's another thing. Like, that also doesn't go away, Right. But blaming something is nebulous and hard to grasp as the economy is way more difficult than just blaming your parents or grandparents, especially when they're complaining about how lazy you are. Yeah, I think like o older generations say Gen Z are lazy and they suck. Younger generations like Gen Z say the older generations ruin the economy. And the reality is that generational politics are silly. I use it colloquially for funsies, but overall they're silly. It's just a way to mask the truth. The real truth is class politics. As a worker, you have goals. You want to work the least amount of hours for the most amount of pay. It's perfectly normal to feel this way. This is a normal thing, okay? I'm talking about this from the perspective of self-interest. Your boss, on the other hand, the capital owner, person who owns the job, owns the workplace, owns the business, wants you to work for the most amount of hours for the least amount of pay that they can get away with paying you. This is the inherent contradiction that causes the division and also the, the antagonism between the two classes. Same thing happened with your parents as well. After the Black Death, there were lots of complaints of the ruling class that serfs and peasants were quiet quitting and in general didn't want to work anymore from the statutes of laborers, 1349 to 51. You can read the same stuff in the Wall Street Journal today. This goes back to my Lord uh, argument. Whereas it was lately ordained by our Lord, the King, and by ascent of the prelates, earls, barons, and others of his council against the malice of servants who were idle and not willing to serve after the pestilence without excessive wages, that such manner of servants, as well men as women, should be bound to serve, receiving the customary salary and wages in the places where they ought to serve in the 20th 
year of the reign of the king that now is, or five or six years before, and that the same servants, refusing to serve in such a manner, should be punished by imprisonment of their bodies. The servants having no regard to the ordinance, but to their ease and singular covetousness, do withdraw themselves from serving great men and others, unless they have livery and wages double, or treble of what they were wont to take in the 20th year and earlier, to the great damage of the great men and impoverishment of all the commonality. The statute applied to all those who did not own enough land for their own subsistence, obliging them to work for lords at fixed wages. Hence it struck at small holders as such. That's right. So it doesn't even matter what the structure looks like. I've covered this before, the nobody wants to work anymore uh, thing before. I mean, it goes way, way, way back in time, not just like 1894. Worker been lazy for a long time. Miracle, we're here. The other part of this that I find really cool, really fascinating rather, is that the way that we are describing the lords, okay, that hasn't changed either. Class dynamics have not changed at all. Because when you look at it, they're still regarding the job providers as great men. You are serving great men, okay? The attitude of entitlement is still there. You should be excited at the prospect of serving a great man. What holds the glue that holds that structure together at that time was, of course, still the threat of violence. But beyond that, which, by the way, still exists, we have police forces, system, a criminal justice system for this specific reason, but also the glue, the theoretical glue that held it all together was God was religion. Nowadays, not so much, especially in the Western world. Don't really believe in the God stuff that much, but they do believe in another ideology, especially here in the United States of America. They believe it more than they believe God in some instances. That's capitalism. And the glue within capitalism is no longer the divine right to rule, but instead meritocracy. The idea that Every single person can go from being a peasant to being a Lord King is consistently instilled upon the population, reinforced over and over and over again since birth. That fallacy, that fake freedom that you have for class mobility is seen as the shining beacon that keeps it going. Meritocracy, the idea that Elon Musk, of course, worked hard and worked smart, and that's precisely the reason why he has, you know, $200 billion of fake money. The myth of gifted individual, the myth of the gifted individual, Elon Musk, he deserves it. He did it. He worked hard for that money. He worked smart for that money. How dare you say anything about Elon? How dare you say he's stupid? No matter what the evidence points to, he's still worth $200 and $30 billion. doesn't matter if he took a company and tanked it like the one that we're looking at currently, Twitter, right? He's still worth the most, which means he still is the best, right? Bigger the number, better the person. And that's it. Bullshit. It's complete bullshit. Meritocracy is a lie.